Lockdown with Dan McLeod and Eddie Ritzker. All right, sports fans, welcome in for another edition of the Sporting Lockdown. You with Dan, Eddie Ritzker. What's up? What's up, my man? I'm good. How you doing? I'm always doing good when I'm with you. JB, the ultimate rider, how are you? There you go, I'm good, thank you. And Nate. But moving on here, we get... No, I'm sorry, Nate, wow. the right guy. Wow. Wow. Uh, Straight away. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you distinguish it back to being a race then? Well, because you introduce the three not white people, and you get to the white guy and just... Just kind of you sound like the racist. Right over me. That's true. I'm the racist. No, he's Nate, the racist. Nate, you sound like the racist. This You're the is, one who brought race out. This is reverse John Barry racism. Sounds like a white name. <laughs> <laughs> are we? Are we back or to John, John Barry or Jean Baptiste? <laughs> can, can you just fill us in on the background of Jean Baptiste? Uh, well, ex- my, my actual name is just John Barry, um, but Jean Baptiste is uh, the name that I had to change it to because Facebook didn't like my real name. So what? they said I have to change it to my real name, which it already was, so... John Barry wasn't real enough for Facebook? Apparently not. Oh, wow. That's ridiculous. It is. So wh- where, did, where did you get, um... So how did John Bupt- is Baptiste Barry? <laughs> no, no, it's just... <laughs> you're, John, you don't John look like Baptiste. a Baptiste. <laughs> John, John <laughs> Baptiste. <laughs> are, are you... <laughs> Are you a white guy from India? Are you a monk? <laughs> Your do name you, sounds like you're a monk. Do you, do you live in the Tibetan like hills and mountains and things yes, like that? Yep, you generally, do? Uh, most of the time. All right then. Sorry, Nate, the white guy. Back to you. Hey. What, what, what were we talking about? Racism? Sorry, I forgot ah, about that. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you've never tuned in before and you are offended by some slightly sort of the racial remarks which we share amongst each other, what's your problem? Because <laughs> we're perfectly fine with it. Except for maybe Nate right now. He's like looking at us going, why are you always picking on the white guy? Uh. Hey, boys, we're down at the tap room, 74 Wyndham Street, Auckland Central. Because today is UFC Fight Night Broomfield. Henderson versus Thatch. Yep. Yeah, the, pre- the, uh, the, the undercard is on now on Sky Sport. We're watching it live. Danny, if you want, come down. $5 Heineken, $5 Woodstock, and $10 lunch special. Did you know... You can get a steak here every day for lunch for only ten dollars, JB. It's ridiculous. That's JB, ridiculous. what are you having for lunch? Well, um, I'm going to have the chili dog today because I am a huge fan of chili and uh, hot dogs, so that's what's up. All right, do you like the red hot chili peppers? I do, I do. Oh yeah, funny. Oh, I like that. I like that. Itty, what's up? Food wise, yeah. I heard you like strippers. Oh yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> very nice. Substantial meal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, good and hearty for the soul. Uh, hey, really big weekend in sports just been happening. It has been. I mean, I, I I forgot coming into the weekend actually how big this weekend was for sports. You know, and huge everything going on. Of course, we had the kickoff to the Cricket World Cup, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, NBA All Star Weekend, which we're also going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about. Um, actually, it's you were quite keen to talk about some cricket today, weren't you? Yeah, I know. I woke up today going, fuck yeah, I want to watch cricket. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's reacting to cricket is that. I I honestly, I will try my hardest to at least watch one match in this World Cup. um, A whole match? A whole match. If we can get get tickets to a match, will you come and watch? One of the okay. series is in Auckland, right? It's, yeah, it's just one of those... Uh, okay, sold out, yeah. sold out. Ah, yeah. Oh, it's all sold out? Yeah, yeah well, we could probably get some tickets at some point. Okay, though. so, like... We're in all like, seriousness. We're like, if you go, if you we go to a cricket match... We are match, well-known sports broadcasters, okay? <laughs> right, journalists. If, if you go to, like, a uh, cricket World Cup match in Auckland... Yeah. Is it predominantly, and I, and I don't want to sound racist, but... Well, wow, here it comes, here it comes, everybody. It like, I don't want to be racist. Here it comes. I'm not sure. Is it half a no. Who asked the TNC? It's games? full of drunks. That's yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's is, is really the World Cup just going to be the guys getting drunk. Yeah. The, the long Every game. cricket match. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. It's just a long game games. of getting drunk rather than getting drunk for 90 minutes. You can do. How you, long does a cricket game last? Okay, all so day. you got three types of cricket games. You've got a test match, which lasts that's for the one that's five days. Day. Five days, seven hours. Per Fuck day. that. <laughs> <laughs> then of drinking, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you've got um, your one, one day, day one day, which yeah, is like yeah. a six-hour affair, and that's and what this World Cup is. Yeah, this is what this World Cup is. Sure. Then you've got twenty over games, T Twenty, which lasts for three hours, and that's basically the one that everyone goes gets like really fucked up. Yeah. And it's like the is sevens. It, is that the yeah. oh yeah, so that's the sevens version. Yeah, yeah that's the oh, shortest yeah. version of the game, and it's fun. It's, it's good. People can go in after work. They can yeah. watch the game. They can yeah, it's it's, it's really good. So yeah. Cricket, you love it. You, I, I guarantee you, by the end of this Cricket World Cup, you are going to be a fan. Do you want to know why? Oh, that's that's a, that's big, a big call. I you know, know why. why. I know why. You're going to fall in. What, you're going to fall in love with the history. 
You're going to fall in love uh, with the or a stripper. emotion. Fell in love with the cricket. Actually, <laughs> I like that, JB. Oh, you, can yeah. be, you can almost oh, listen. <laughs> Actually, do us a favor. Don't do it again. <laughs> yeah, I need yeah, more auto tune. Itzy uh, just turns around and looks at me like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> now you sound like John Barry. <laughs> <laughs> right, John, Jean Baptiste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a lot of stuff JB. to talk about. Super Rugby kicked off this weekend. The All Blacks to Tassar Moore. We're going to talk a little bit about that update. America's Cup, another one you're going to be really interested to, t- to talk about is the America's, America's Cup. You'll be looking forward to talking about a little bit of America's Cup, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, the government, you know, they're uh, deciding oh, that they might well, try and try and help us. Well, not us out, but help out the campaign for the America's Cup. I, I think that I think Sonny Bill needs to play in the America's Cup so he can win that. <laughs> yeah, he could be the captain of he the America's the Cup. I, 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 th- I feel like anything he touches at the moment is gold. Who's this? Sonny, Sonny Bill. Bill. Oh yeah. yeah, Sonny Bill would be on that boat behind that helm, and like <laughs> fucking no one would have a chance. He wouldn't be crying when they lose either. Yeah, yeah, no, he'll, he'll, he'll be pushing the boat. Yeah. He'll be losing, he'll <laughs> jump out and be behind swimming. swimming. Honestly, yeah, yeah. he would be at the back of it, kicking, like holding on to it like a flutter board <laughs> and just propelling the boat forward. So we've got a lot to talk about before we get into Sprawl and Brawl because it's another big day. Of course, UFC Fight Night is happening and all of that. So good to oh. have you guys along. Hey. And just a quick question, guys. Yeah, go. How was your guys' Valentine's? Oh, so romantic. <laughs> what, did, what, did you, what, did you, what did you get yourself for Valentine's? What did you and the moisturizer do? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, uh, uh, is this podcast rated R18? Or <laughs> You've heard fucking cunt in, 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 in like the news weeks. I'm pretty sure like, there's no limits. I woke up with my hungover flatmates, went and got pies, and then came to work. Why did you get pies? Because they were hungover. Uh, apple pies? pies. <laughs> was it slightly <laughs> Wu-Tang pie? <laughs> was it Georgie pie? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. What did you do with the pie? <laughs> okay, is this moving on? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Cricket World Cup kicked off this week. Of course, the opening ceremony was on Thursday night. An interesting affair. It's, it's sort of had a little bit of media coverage in the last <laughs> uh, few days. And even if you're not a cricket fan, you've probably heard about how much yeah. the Cricket World Cup opening ceremony well, sucked, shit, hey. sucked the balls. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Someone said it looked like a primary production. I was just about to say, <laughs> I've been to my niece's primary school end of year show, which looked like <laughs> it had a bigger budget than the, than the opening <laughs> ceremony to the Cricket World Cup. It was the who's, worst. Whose fault is that, though? Is that like the, the league's fault, or well, is it New Zealand's fault? So here's what I understand. The Australians, so what, what they did with it was they broke it up into two parts. They had the New Zealand part first, out of Christchurch. Then they had the Australian part, simulcast straight afterwards, uh, yep. out of Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, but they both sucked. <laughs> and generally, when you think about what the Australians can do and all that sort of stuff, yeah, and what they've done, whether it be the Olympic Sydney, Games, yeah. yeah, whether it be the Rugby World Cup in two thousand three, was the game they know how to better? they know how to put a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's they right. know Even the New Year's was celebrations. The hero better, JB. Yeah, um, it was great. Well, you know, I was, I was the centre of attention. So <laughs> JB's like better? JB's like they call it Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they've got this is this is Aussies know how to do this. So it can't be yeah. just us. You yeah, being yeah. cheap, cheesy New Zealanders. What I don't get here is this is the biggest spectacle that you've got for cricket. Yeah. This is the this is this is the Super Bowl of cricket. Yeah. Okay? It happens yeah. only every four years. Is Katy Perry gonna come out at half time? Probably so. not, but that Bam Bam Bigelow might. Be legit. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from beyond the grave. Who did it better? <laughs> and and so this is like the this is like the ultimate for cricket fans. Yet the state of that opening ceremony was a mess. It was terrible. Yeah. And not just in New Zealand, but in Australia also. So the question I have for you is, is it an organizational thing or did it come down to budget? And well, if it came down to budget, I'd be saying, what the F? Yeah. You're talking like about the largest sporting market in the world and in, in, in the right. subcontinent in India. Yep. And there's all that money. There's a reason cricket players get paid what they get paid. Yeah. How much do they get paid? So a cricket player in the IPL in India can yeah. play, um, get paid, I think, upwards of three or four million dollars for twelve weeks. Uh, uh, ten or twelve weeks. Yeah. Three, four, or, three, three or four, four million, million dollars. Yeah. Is this your best player or your average? No, player? That, that is your like, best player. Yeah. But oh, that is okay. for twelve weeks, okay. and in some cases, you're not even playing twelve games. You're playing like six games yeah. or seven games. Yeah, they have like uh, a minimum they have to play, but it's like they can just yeah. Is, they make is, so, so, so there's money. no salary caps. No, not not no. in that. So that, that's a private league, yeah. uh, which is now backed by yeah, yeah, It's literally yeah, yeah. like rich Indian businessmen just spend however much money they want to so get the players they want. It's literally an auction. So wouldn't it be the better to like do illegal gambling on on that? Okay, all right. <laughs> no, you are literally <laughs> touching into like the problem of cricket. Yeah, so break it down, JD. Gam- gamblers. Yeah. Yeah. 
Tell them what happens in in, in, the, in um, <laughs> yeah, JB's like, I don't know. You mean like the uh, the match fixing, right? That's the one. Yeah. yeah. So they have spot betting. So you know, you could you could put a bet on and say that on ball four of um, the first game, I think that the guy is going to overstep and bowl a no ball, which is like a, a no delivery. Because there's so much money in India and Pak- uh, well, not so yeah. Pakistan, like but in India. Right? Well, uh, population money as well. Yeah, you think like this. There, there's, what, a billion people live in India? Yeah, yeah. that's so right. So the more people there is, the more money there is. Despite yeah. how poor a large percentage yeah, of the yeah, country yeah. is, yeah. The, 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 the gap between wealth and poverty is massive. Like you think how people talk about it here in New Zealand. Yeah. Imagine it times a million yeah. in India. Okay, So there's huge money there. And what happens is, I think, is, is um, gambling illegal in India? I'm not too sure. Is that how we got into illegal illegal bookies and that sort of thing? Oh, possibly, so yeah. Bookies will set... You, you, just like on the TAB, you'll have um, this team will win or this person will score this much and you can bet on that, okay? Then they have spot fixing. Now, spot fixing, for instance, will be on the third ball, You might, you might, they might have an odd. The bookie will go, okay, if a bowler bowls a wide yeah. in the fifth over today, yeah. okay, you can bet on whether or not that'll happen. Same thing... They will also bet on the way match fixing started. Um, um, spot betting started was they would bet. Okay, how many players are wearing hats? That's that's the shit that they bet on in Pakistan and India. Yeah. So it'll be like, um, I'm going to place a bet that seven fielders are going to wear a hat in the tenth over. And because what would happen was these bookies would go to the players yeah. and pay them to fix Cut it. Cut them in. But as it's gone from being like spot fixing, where they're just spot fixing like um, armbands and hats and shoes and things, to Isn't okay, well you're going to control games and outcomes. Yeah. yeah. And cricket is a multi multi billion dollar industry. Yeah, yeah. And so that that's basically that side of things. So in regards to your question, it's already happening. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And that's why I, I think um, guys get busted. And yeah, didn't, didn't that Kiwi guy get busted? And then, he, and then he blamed it on depression. Uh, that was Lou Vincent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lou Vincent. Just just so <laughs> just real clear, Lou, Lou Vincent was born in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and what cricketer X? His, and, and his, his, um, and the now the implication has been is that apparently Chris Kens, New Zealand cricketing yeah. great, is also involved. In that oh, sort of wow. thing. Yeah. But. That's I think before that's a the separate thing. that's before the courts anyway. That's, yeah. that's just the allegation. It's an allegation. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Chris, Chris Kens has, has gone to defend it and that sort of thing. And yeah. I think well, I think I think it's probably something we can touch on when more of it comes to light rather than being speculative right now and Indeed. and getting in a little bit of trouble. Um, so that was that was the opening ceremony. So you're telling me of all this money that they've got in cricket, they couldn't put on a better show than that. That's right. Are eh? you telling me that the best we've got is shapeshifter, is, is Jenny that? Blackmore? Yeah. And Hayley Westerner. Yeah. And who's, some who's little... Hayley Westerner? She, Westerner. She's like kind of classical. Classic vocalist, She's a classical yeah. vocalist, yeah. opera singer, and that's sort of very, very attractive. And, and very, very talented. Successful. Very talented and, very, and very, very yeah. successful. Huge, huge in, in the, the UK. UK. Huge yeah. in the UK. Yeah, yeah, not in like mainstream, though. Think, okay, oh, okay, okay. Let me yeah. put this yeah. in terms for you, my island brother. Think Sole Mio, but hot. Are you saying those brothers nice. aren't hot? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Oh, oh, damn, well. like <laughs> hey, I just said they weren't hot. JB's the one questioning whether or not they're hot or not. Okay, Mardi Gras guy. <laughs> so that was like, yeah. So I don't know. Did any of you guys actually? Did any of you guys watch the opening? I've seen highlights of it, and the highlights I seen were not highlights. Yeah, the giant robot they were, they were with a cricket awkward, bat. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And there was a, a lot of Australian like ones. Sweeping oh. camera angles that kept happening that were yeah, like showing really awkward things. Like, yeah. did you guys see the Richie McCaw? Um, missed high five with Stephen Fleming. Oh, oh no. no! So basically, they they bring out all these stars and they bring out Richie McCall and Stephen Fleming's. I mean, Stephen Fleming's team and he high five Stephen Fleming and they missed the high five. Wow! So now wow. the conversation is: was the three way handshake at the World Cup was that actually Richie McCall's uh, fault? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the John Keys, which is quite funny. Has Richie got a handshake problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh my God! Man, yeah, we're yeah, having the two like, days. Like, so what? Okay. A three-way what? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's what he heard. Oh, it was three-way, and I was like, You're like "Whoa, whoa, whoa! What am I missing out?" His mind wandered. Start, start from the beginning. Oh, someone said oh, three-way. No, He's no, like I've three-way with three. Yeah. Oh, he's got the footage. Got the footage. So anyway, so that's what happened, and I yeah, it was. No, it was see, pretty no, no, you know what that was? It's just two white boys. Generally, you see this happen a lot of times when, and you know, we, when you see white guys kind of come up and high-five each other, it looks really awkward. Yeah, so they don't have the rhythm. They're not out of rhythm. Yeah, white people do have no rhythm. Is true. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's, I've seen it happen before. Have you, you seen know? me try to dance? Thankfully, oh, wow. I have not. Zero rhythm. I d- actually, funny enough, I heard you have a very good singing voice. Yes. They said that he sang a country song yesterday where karaoke. Yeah, yeah, he is a good singer. I've, I've checked out didn't some su- of his footage on YouTube. Didn't surprise me, though, with the genre of music, uh, country music. Yeah. But, definitely, you know, um, definitely a niche market. It is. It is indeed. <laughs> 
Anyway, um, yeah, so what else is on? Is it like cricket? So is it, when does this finish? It'll be, I'm not sure what the exact date is, but it'll be over a month or so, I would imagine. Yeah, that's right. It's a pretty big uh, tournament. I think it's 16 Six teams. Weeks. New Zealand looked really good yesterday. They yeah, did. so that's the next thing we want to talk about is the New Zealand versus Sri Lanka game yesterday. They yeah. were. Yeah, New Zealand yeah, won by Sri Lanka. 98 like ranked. Uh, Sri Lanka's a Sri Lanka's a top pretty, team. Pretty, yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. Five. They're good. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, I'd say they're five or six. Top five of. They've six. been runners up at the last two World Cups. Yeah. Oh, okay then. Yeah, and they've got a lot of like you got a guy like Kumasunga Kara, who's regarded as being like one of the, one of the greatest um, yeah. limited yeah. overs batsmen of all time yeah. or batsmen wicket keepers. Like so, Sri Lanka are, are, are good, but whether or not here's the thing: cricket is a, a game that's subjective to the conditions. Yeah. So. Like weather and shit. Yeah, like weather. Not because what happens is, say for instance, it's overcast. The ball swings in the air when they yeah. bowl the ball. And things Humidity like that. even can affect things. That's yeah. right. But also the major thing in regards to environment is what happens with the pitch. Now, in, yeah. in, in like in, in the subcontinent, in India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and stuff, um, the ball turns a lot more just because of the way the the soil is. Yeah. Here in New Zealand, it's quite flat, so we. It doesn't. It doesn't turn. So yeah. they've and got like greener wickets. Yeah, and greener wickets. So they've got spin bowlers. So they can't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not suitable to their sort of play. Yeah. Does that make sense? And that's oh, the, yeah. like, that's yeah. their style. Yeah. That's their game plan. And so it makes it hard for them here. We're yeah. here in New Zealand because we're used to growing up and playing the type of cricket, yeah. playing on our grass and that sort of thing. Yeah. It's actually uh, suited to them. So New Zealand's actually one much, of the favourites. How much? How, how much does that really affect the game? It's massive. It's, it's, it's huge. huge. Yeah, it's, huge. it's a huge factor. It's just the bowling bowlers that are, it well, affects. No, because the, the batsmen affects the batsmen too. Because the game starts with the bowling, so you know. But it's not. But it's not just about that. When it comes to batting and stuff, so say you're batting at the crease, if if the ball if the if the ground is real like fucked up, and the ball moves around a lot off the surface, then it's hard yeah, to tell yeah. where the ball's going to go. Yeah. But if you know it's uh, quite okay. flat, you know how high the ball's going to yeah. bounce. You, got you got know confidence. You know if it's going to move. Yeah, so you, yeah, you, you know how do you how you're going to hit the ball and things like that. So it should make for a really high scoring World Cup this year, I think. Yeah, it's, well, it's going to be really. New Zealand high yesterday scored three thirty one for six in their fifty overs, so that's that's a damn good score. Yeah. And just covering off that game, it was fantastic right from the get go. So Martin Guptill comes off, quick single, yeah. gets off strike. Brendan McCullum straight away two fours, you know. Yeah. And Brendan McCullum has the potential of really solidifying his position in New Zealand sporting history, but also as a world cricket superstar. Yeah. yeah. Like everyone knows Brendan McCullum's this big slogging batsman. He's become New Zealand captain, and yeah. he's a good all-round player in regards to how he fields and his wicket keeping when he was. But the potential here for him is that he could be the batsman of the World Cup yeah. and by doing so creating a legacy similar to those like the Brian Laras and the Tendulkas um, and, and, and that sort of that sort of positioning you have a look at the at the, um, the advertisements for the Cricket World Cup in Australia and New Zealand who's one of the three players which they focus on Brendan McCullum yeah, because right. he sells tickets he yeah. sells bums and seats he's an exciting player but he's also potentially going to be one of the greats of world cricket if if he can have a really, really great World Cup this time round. Yeah, that's right. And so, he started off really, really well. I think he scored a very quick fire fifty. Yeah. And um, before he was dismissed, um, caught he out. Might, he's he probably going to get the fastest fifty of the tournament. Like he, oh, he's, wow. he's very likely to get that. I think so. Yeah. And he, he went out. He was playing a big shot, a big slog over long on, got caught deep. Um, yep. But then you had Kane Williamson came in. Kane Williamson also very good. Another very quick fire fifty, or yep. well, relatively quick fire for him. Ross Taylor disappointed again. Martin Guptill unfortunately got out on 49. It was he was very unlucky there. Yeah, shame. But the thing about the New Zealand batting lineup yesterday was everybody was contributing in some fashion. Everyone was hitting runs, and then of course Corey Anderson came out and had a really quick 70 odd to, to finish it off. It was yeah. yeah. I don't think if you have a look at the card, how many balls did he hit his 70 odd? Yeah. He had 75 of 46 balls. Okay, so 75 of yeah, 46. That, that is fast. That is pretty quick. 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 And combined with Ronke at the end, Ronke also yeah, was, was, was quite a good was quite a good deaf batsman as well. Yeah. So they set a really good total, and then they came out, and for a while there, they weren't able to apply any pressure on the Sri Lankan batsman with their bowling. But what happened? In came the man who people thought wasn't even going to be in the starting eleven, yeah, yeah. and probably one of the greatest cricketers that we've ever had. Definitely, Daniel Vittori, yeah. the man and, himself. And Vittori came in. I think he went at something three point two five and over. 
Yeah. Three point two five. So good for three point four and over. One day, as a typical Dan Vittori line. But yeah. the different the difference between this performance uh, yesterday was he's, he he goes at under four, sometimes under three and over oh, a lot. Yeah. And he doesn't get a lot of wickets anymore. But what he does, he creates wicket creating pressure yeah. at the other end. That's so right. people go to me, oh, well, Nathan McCullum um, takes more wickets now. When you tell me how many wickets uh, have been created at the other end because of the pressure that Vittori applies. So that I mean that that's a that's a key thing here, you know. He's very very efficient, and and that's such a huge thing. Where if you can have one guy down one end, just constantly putting pressure on with yep. not getting many runs, and then you've got someone down the other end who's creating chances, like the Gavin Larson effect. Yeah, it's just it's a great like combination to have. And, and yesterday he was able to combat that, and also create two wickets for himself. So um, Daniel Vittori took the pressure and reversed it back onto yep. the Sri Lankans. Took when a it catch as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So. It was a really good all-round performance by by the Kiwis. Um, moving forward, I think their next game is against um, who's is against England. I don't know. If I think it might be against England at at um, Wellington Regional Stadium. I think maybe on Friday. Do they, do, you know, no, in the um, the Cricket World Cup. What's the bottom cup? Like, what are, what, are, what are the losers play? Yeah, for? You're, you're right about that, Dan. It is no, uh, West, Westpac Trust on Friday. Yeah, on Friday against England. Against the yeah, yeah, which will be a good. Uh, they don't, it's not like the sevens where they have like a bowl or things like that. Oh, Basically, okay. you have one cup. Yeah, uh, you, you know, win it or you don't. And that's the fucking way a competition should be. And where's yeah. New Zealand ranked? Uh, I think we're ranked in the top five. I think we're fifth. Yeah. I think for one day internationals or something like that. I'm not too sure. But we, but we're a favourite because of the conditions. We're favourite yeah, because yeah, home of our favourite. The form that we, which we have at the moment yeah. as well. People are picking in New Zealand Australia final. We're peaking well, oh, eh? well peaking wow. at the right time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they've got England and they should be. I, th- I think they're in a good position. England, of course, moving on to that. We're beaten by Australia last night. I only saw highlights of it, but Australia looking pretty good coming off the form from their recent tri series victory over. Um, over India and England, so th- well, they scored three forty-two for nine. So yeah. they even outscored New Zealand, and that's against the Palms. So and that was at a packed MCG too. Yeah, you know, and it looked really good. I, I, I've been really excited about the Cricket World Cup. I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a different World Cup to what we've experienced, but in the past, part of the reason because I think New Zealand will do quite well, and we could get that New Zealand Australia final, which we've been wanting for for a long time. Yeah. And New Zealand are legitimately now not just a dark horse. They're a legitimate favourite in this favorite, competition. Favourite, that's right. Yeah, a couple of big games today too on the uh, on the uh, Cricket World Cup front. South Africa versus Zimbabwe at um, we, we, now where's that being played that's, today? That's uh, oh, hang on, let me see. It's here in New Zealand though. Yeah, it's in uh, Seddon Park, Hamilton. Okay, so it's Seddon Park, Hamilton should be a very very easy victory for the South Africans. Yeah, who are the only probably the only team which could be a stumbling block to us getting to the final. Well, yeah. they're a hundred and one. Oh, sorry, they're ten for one now. Okay, yeah, yeah. and that's a, what over there. Uh, fourth over. Okay. Wait, what? Wait, no. What? Fourth, fourth ball. What? Yeah. Is it ten for one, not hundred. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Ten for one, hundred for one. <laughs> so, okay, all right. So th- that's an early loss for South Africa and, and the wicket stakes there. Yeah. But I think South Africa will be fine, full of superstars, and of course they got the top one day batsman in the world at the moment in AB de Villiers. Yeah, yeah. The big grudge match, of course, coming out of Adelaide Oval is going to be Pakistan versus India later on this evening. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know who to pick on this one. Pakistan have looked okay, but India have looked pretty, pretty sub below par. Be interesting to see how the two teams go over in the Adelaide Oval surface, which is traditionally quite a flat surface, and a lot of runs get scored. Definitely a bit of a derby match as well. You know, uh, surely there's a good rivalry between those teams. Well, you'd think so. The fucking countries hate each other. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think there is a more deep, deeply rooted hate than other, <laughs> other than Israel Palestine. <laughs> I think it's followed by. I think it goes Israel Palestine. Northern Ireland, Great Britain, yep. and then India, Pakistan. I, yep. They they just fucking hate each other. I, man, I used to love Pakistan back in the nineties and two thousands. They just the express pace that they used to have. Sure, sure, sure. Ralph Pindi Express, etc. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I I remember I remember the the nineteen ninety two World Cup final. Oh, huge. Um, where Pakistan defeated England. Yeah. And yeah, no, I, Ravi Shastri was my favorite batsman. No. Imran Khan was in that team. Inzamamo Huck. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Waka Yunus. Yeah, Wazi Makram. Wazi Makram. The, the Express Pace team. What a great, what a great lineup it was. It was a yeah, fucking. That was, that was like the height stars. of Pakistan yeah. cricket. And that English team were just out of their depth on that day. Yeah, just, that's right. not even, not even a chance. No. Um, so yeah, Cricket World Cup. If you get an opportunity to pick up some tickets, I suggest you go check it out. Especially Definitely those of you, along. especially those of you who aren't crickets fans and think, "Oh fuck, cricket is boring." Yep. 
yep, yes, yeah. you're not, it's not going to change. Yeah, yeah, it is like, yeah. Like one yeah. game could change that. One game live in the stands, one having game. a drink in the sun, could actually change you that. You want $100,000 worth of one game Oh, that's cash. right. That's what's up. You one know, game, so. one box of beer, sorted. There you go. That's all <laughs> it takes, E.T. One box of beer. That's where you failed. I need like 10 <laughs> boxes. <laughs> you were good. No, like to nine to, to make be fair. Yeah. I've seen you on 10 boxes. Yeah. Yo. yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> we don't want 10 boxes. Yeah. So, Cricket World Cup, check it out, guys, if you get opportunity to. Uh, it's it's awesome. And I think the um, uh, the fever's not quite like Rugby World Cup because everyone was into rugby. And yeah. it was such a hugely, deeply rooted um, a want and desire to win. But Do you I, think the scandal has sort of turned people off cricket nah, at all? Nah, people don't give a shit about that here. Yeah. I think people like the scandal. People like to see people. True. People like to see well-known people like fuck up. Make a bit like, of news. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like he's Mark one of Ellis. us. Remember Mark Ellis when he got <laughs> done for the old drug thing? <laughs> the ickies. And then, yeah, and then all of a sudden he was like Metro's Auckland of the yeah, Year. Yeah, that's Zealand right, eh? Yeah. Oh. And, he, and he made a shitload of money off Sounds that Sounds like a, a few years extra yeah, on his contract. But people love that shit. So people don't necessarily get turned on. And I think New Zealanders, as New Zealand, like New Zealanders, we are like, we, we, we thrive on that shit. We're, yeah, like, yeah. we're like, yeah, man, yeah. Like yeah. news from our backyard, I don't care what it is. Pretty much, you know. So I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that whole scandal has rocked it at all. Um, of course, we're also happening this weekend. Our next major topic, NBA All Star Weekend. That's you know? up. And for any true NBA basketball fan, if you're into hoops, yep. this is where it's at. Hey, by the way, you got a shout out to make, don't you? I definitely do. To a good friend of mine and Dan's, uh, Mr. Armchair Hoops, Jamie Valentine. Catch him on Twitter at Armchair Hoops. He's a good friend of ours and uh, definitely does the advanced stats. But also, if you're a guy who doesn't know a lot about basketball, he's a good guy to follow because he breaks awesome. it down quite yeah, well. So. that's right. He's uh, very thorough and he's a patient guy as well. He reminds me a lot of Nathan, <laughs> yeah. except much he's better looking. He's a patient looking. guy. Definitely much better looking. The beard does, it, does, does a good job for Jamie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't grow a beard. So. And actually, he's also a musician. <laughs> so. He's a puberty yeah. first. you got a lot in common. <laughs> you, you are, not only are you the less cooler Nathan, you're now also... The not quite so good looking Jamie Valentine. That's right. Oh, you know, this I is esteemed, esteemed. I'll take um, it. You know, he's like, I'll, t- he's like, I'll take anything. <laughs> I'll take anything right now. Um, yesterday was the uh, the Rising Stars game. Yep. yep. Now, good game. Uh, did you enjoy it? Yeah, th- as much as any of the Rising Stars games. I, I get a little. I think we touched on this last week. How I, I don't quite enjoy watching the games as much. Yeah. Because. I don't like how they don't play any defense. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because defense for me is such a fundamental. Um, what do you mean they don't play any defense? Because it's fun. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I get what you mean. It's like you know, yeah, it's yeah. like the top guys in the league just having a only bit of a Kobe laugh. plays defense. Jack. Kobe, that's Kobe, right. Yeah. Kobe oh, takes so it like Kobe serious. Kobe yeah. takes it serious. Oh, so that's yeah. good. There's there's no game that Kobe doesn't take serious. That's right. Oh, that's good. That, that's one on one with his kids. Just. In oh, no, face honestly, he's like, yeah, yeah. Like, the kids have to wear like those those masks <laughs> on their face because they've broken their nose so many times. Um, and by the way, Kobe Bryant's wife, fine as hell. Just saying. Is he still with the same chick? <laughs> yeah, man, he's still oh, the same. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She went back. Oh, hey, she a good she woman. Know, she knows where the good, she good a money good is. Woman. Wait, hey, she could still leave and still take half of that good money. True, yeah, and, pro- and, true. Yeah, oh, and Kobe will be fine. Of, yeah, Kobe's Co- yeah. not going to be like crying. Yeah, no, Kobe will just sell some more shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. NBA All-Star Weekend, the Rising Stars game yesterday, Andrew Wiggins, massive performance, MVP in the world side, which beat the United States. Yep. Um, Break it down. Yeah, well, obviously, Andrew Wiggins, the number one draft pick uh, this, well, this season, this year and last year. Uh, Canadian, so he played for the uh, international All Stars. Wiggins, and, um, yeah, sounds like a Canadian name too. Yep, doesn't sound. It's, 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 he's a I'm black guy. He's black. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he is yeah, black. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so you know, another Probably legendary like Canadian. Cousin. Like I think it's uh, two, he's two years in a row, Drake. three years in a row. It's been a Canadian first draft pick. Oh, but um, wow, yeah. yeah, he's a good player, and um, yeah, he's he's definitely one of my favourites. And I'm pretty sad as a Cleveland fan that that we actually traded him for K Love. That's ridiculous. That Who's was always ridiculous. <laughs> Who trades the number one draft pick? What is the, that? The best new player coming through. Yeah. Now don't get me wrong. Kevin Love is a top oh, player. Kevin yeah. Love, uh, okay. like you know, rebound leader, etc. You know, all star multiple time. But you know, when you this guy, he's the next LeBron by by most people's accounts, and they traded him for a guy who is nowhere near that level. So do you, do you think? Um, actually, I think you might disagree with that about Kevin Love because you're a big Kevin Love fan, aren't you? I think he's done. He, it seems like so far in Cleveland he's underwhelmed on most parts and he may be one of those guys where he's great on a bad team yeah. he's not so good on, on a good team on an excellent team like it, also, it also could be sorry I'm eating at the moment <laughs> it also could be because the system doesn't 
like yeah, he, doesn't, he doesn't really fit in that yeah. in that team. And also they have Tristan Thompson, who is an excellent rebounder. Yeah. You know, so he's he's got to compete more actively for rebounds. But the, like I thought, his job at Cleveland was just going to be spot up shooter. Yeah. And you know, maybe in the paint for a few minutes a game. Did you find the Rising Stars game, you guys, interesting? Enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah. There's some incredible highlights. Like some of the dunks that were going on. And yeah, it's always, always fun when they do a bit of a dunk lineup or yeah. you know layup lines. Did Kevin Hart do a dunk in the celebrity game? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I Obviously. think I saw something on Facebook where a girl, I think from the what, the woman, woman uh, Shawnee yeah. Williams. Yeah, she did like a little trick around him. A little, <laughs> I don't know. Of course she did. <laughs> She's a professional women's basketball player. Yeah, yeah. Like people, people like rip is off. Kevin Hart actually good. Or is it just more because it's... No, he's a black guy who can ball. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so he can right. actually ball. And he's, no, no, he's hilarious. A black guy he has a huge personality. Like, yeah. So yeah, he's yeah, shooing. Yeah, yeah. Celebrity game yesterday. MVP, four-time MVP, Kevin yeah, Hart. Won it again. And Kevin Hart's like, retired. Yeah, four he's and out. Like, there's <laughs> nothing... <laughs> Kevin Hart's like, there is nothing else I can achieve. <laughs> I am leaving the game on a high. <laughs> and um, I'll tell you what I would like to do. Or what I'd like to see. I'd like to see Kevin Hart not be in every fucking movie that comes out that's, that, that, that's got a black os- yeah. ensemble cast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kevin right Hart is in ev- they, I appreciate the guy's hustle, but he's in everything. Yeah. And it's like, hey, listen here. He's the poor man's Eddie Murphy. He is the poor man's Chris Rock. <laughs> yes. Hell, I'll even say it. He's the poor man's walking version of Tracy Morgan. Okay? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> no, I, no, I would actually, soon. I wouldn't mind seeing him and Arne Duncan in, in a movie together as like, I don't know, what? some sort of buddy. Arne Duncan? Yeah, he's, he's uh, he plays in the celebrity games um, himself. He's the what? Secretary of Education? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Are you, you, that's how, What? <laughs> Just you know, honestly, he's like by far the best player. Yeah, he is. Game. He he's dominates incredible. when he plays, and he's he's hilarious on on camera oh, as well. Oh, he's quite funny. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He's yeah. like, yeah, I think he last year had twenty points. I'd like to see yeah, Kirk Cobain play in the old, in the celebrity game. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> There's never I'd like to see some serial killers just playing. Just <laughs> Charles Manson, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I don't. Did you see Charles Manson's um, wedding? <laughs> Did you think he got called off? So Charles, Ma- Charles Manson's wedding has been called off because he found out that, his, that, that all she wants to do is after he dies, yeah. she wants to get control of his body. So this girl is... She's going to have sex with his she body. Wants she wants to do what he did uh. to his mum. Right? She's worked out a plan. Yeah, so yeah, she's worked out a plan. Her and her friends, that they will... She will marry him and when he dies... They will freeze his body and put it in a glass case so they can have it on display. Like at, Lennon. At dinner parties. Yeah. Wow. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah, same. Look at her. Yeah, she looks parties. like a dead eyed psycho okay. in, on all the photos. She looks like she has Look at her. She is dead a bodies. dead eye. So the celebrity game was yesterday. Um, the fuck? It was a bit of a, a boring lineup, I thought, you know? Yeah. So anyway. However, today's where the real All Star action picks up. Mr. White Guy, Nate, break down the dunk contest. Who we got? The, uh, I'm going to try to say his name. I'll probably get it wrong. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Kumpo? That was Kumpo? so right. Wrong. Wrong. Even, that, that was so right. Even Nelson Mandela is <laughs> coming back from the grave to like fucking deal to you. You said his name wrong. Firstly, we have <laughs> the Greek freak from the Bucks. Zach Levine from the Timberwolves. Victor Oladipo from the yeah. Magic. And I like Victor. Yeah. I like Victor Oladipo. All However, guys. I don't think he's got the flair of Zach Levine. And Levine, you, and man. you picked it earlier. Zach Levine's your choice. Yeah, yeah. Definitely Zach Levine. He's so athletic. And um, he'll, he'll definitely have a chip he on his shoulder. He freakishly Gerald Green-esque. Where he, yes. like, he jumps and it's like... He's just in the air a lot longer. He gets than like you. a double pump on his jumps. Like, you know, he jumps and then it's he hangs and then he can. Oh, nice. Nate literally has a chip on his shoulder right now. A uh, French fry from the Great Kitchen down here at the tap room. Anyway, so <laughs> with all of that happening and with all the excitement of All Star Weekend, whoever thought that the three point competition would, would be, be the highlight of ever. ever? And because of one reason or two words Splash Brothers. That's it. Clay Thompson. Steph Curry, who do you pick? Because they're, they're the two obvious favourites. I don't pick either. Oh, you Corva? You I, I think I'm a Corva. Yeah. Oh, nice. Because uh, I was. Th- I, I look Steph at the Curry th- has to win this at some point. He's got it. Yeah. Fourth time in a row, fourth right? Time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's thing like is, with the three point shootout, traditionally, it's guys that are like have a really set form shooters. Like, yeah. Steph Curry is kind of a streaky. Kind of he's, he's a like he needs f- yeah like you say he's like a heat he gets he goes on heat and yeah, yeah. like guys like Corva Ray Allen those kind of shooters that have that real perfect shot yeah generally do are, are the more consistent guys like obviously any one of these eight guys could get hot and just yeah, blow it right. out of the water the weird thing this year is I think it was the same last year actually was 
they added the money ball rack. Yeah. Which means now the high score is not 30, it's 34. Yeah, that's right. Which I personally, like, it'll make it more exciting, but it yep. stu- sucks for re- records. Like, someone could come out and get 31. True. And then not be, like, not, not as good as the yep. old 26, which is, I think is the current record. Yeah. I'm just watching a video package of Steph Curry before the three point competition, and he is. He is. He's lights out, man. Yeah, he is lights out. Like you, you. He's probably he, he is the new definition of clutch in the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like the Splash Brothers personally, but I can absolutely acknowledge that he is unbelievable. I don't like Clay Thompson, I, I, but I like Steph Curry. There's something yeah. about his swagger and his general play, I, which I really enjoy. So yeah. he's doing like everything this weekend, Steph Curry. He's doing uh, shooting stars. He's doing. Uh, he's putting uh, a little, a little three point shootout, and then yeah, and then uh, all star game. game. Yeah. yeah. So, and of course, Steph Curry was the number one vote getter, wasn't he, for this year? Yeah, that's right. Which was LeBron. I mean, out, that, that's a big deal. That's a huge that's deal. That Steph Curry got more votes than LeBron James. Yeah, and it's a. I'm telling you now, it's a sign of how the how the American public feel about LeBron about LeBron James. Definitely, yeah. definitely. You know, so big weekend, All Star weekend, dunk competi- contest is literally about to start very very shortly. If you're at home listening and want to watch it, check out Sky Channel 60, ESPN. It is NBA All Star Weekend, and we're going to break even more of it down next weekend when we have a look back at it. Also, beginning this weekend, part of our massive weekend of sport here in New Zealand, Super Rugby kicked off Friday night. Crusaders versus Rebels. Crusaders going down twenty to ten to the Rebels. Damn! In which case, it's the Rebels' first win outside of Australia. Wow! Sure. So it was a big deal. It was a massive win, and the Crusaders looked pretty horrible. And a couple of points there from it was the lack of cohesion in the in the, in the Crusaders' lineup, but also Dan Carter coming hobbling off injured as well again. Man, it's just like the Kobe syndrome, you know? Yeah, except without as much money. <laughs> so, so Crusaders going down Then the action last night In fact overnight on the Friday night The Hurricanes kicked off their season With a win against the Cats yep. um, Over in South Africa I think in Bloemfontein And then the Blues Chiefs last night Solid match um, The Blues terrible Blues lost Yeah Fuck. Blues yeah. lost 23-18 I'm Look, such a Blues fan And I'm so sick of them losing really? man I'm sick of them losing too I love Fuck, the Blues man. man I love Auckland rugby yeah. Yeah, But yeah. I'm fucking sick of this You know And John Kuhn If John Kuhn is ever going to win The Super Rugby title yeah. This is the year They've got the team Oh, yeah. They have the team. You know, they've got Jimmy Cowan at halfback. So we've got an experienced head right in the middle there to direct everything now. Okay, and he looked good too. you got Ehiah West, the young up-and-coming first five, yeah. you know, who, who has the, the feet. He has the Benji syndrome. He can do everything. Yeah. He can kick, he can pass, he can catch, he can tackle, he can run. He's incredible. Then you've got their back three, where you've got a guy like Charlie Piertel, who's playing on the wing. Then you've got um, um, Vicenea, at the back there at fullback, they've got speed to burn and ability. This is the year. And you look at the Ford pack as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when, you, when you're led by a guy like Jerome Kaino, yeah, man. who yeah, yeah, came yeah. back from Japan, is probably the only player to come back from Japan better than he was when he yeah. left. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking unreal. Yeah. So, so so what went wrong in that game then? Oh, they had a terrible, terrible first half. They yeah. literally got beaten up up front. You know, oh, and, and really? the Rucks and Mons, they just got smashed by early the Chiefs. Early tries, yeah. Yeah, early tries by the, yeah. by the Chiefs. Yeah. And, but the Blues, however, did come back. They won the second half, but just wasn't quite enough. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was a much more concerted effort in the second half. Yeah. They, they had a lot more composure. They took their time. They, they set phases Smarter up. On. They just That's didn't right. have enough time. The Blues, are, I think the Blues get guilty because John Kuhn's philosophy is to allow these guys to sort of um, let their creativity mind run wild when they play their footy. Oh, yeah. But what happens when you do that? I mean... Nothing. Players of <laughs> Polynesian, obviously you lose. Players yeah. of Polynesian, Maori descent, which is generally who you get out of out of Auckland. Yep. Okay. Tend to need a little bit more structure. Bit of direction before, before eh? they get before they get out wide and get yep. the ball yeah. out there. And you got to yeah. harness that athleticism. That's yeah. right. And that's what happened in the second half. They kind of like kick back a little bit. They set the phases. They ran two or three phases to put themselves in a better position. Yeah. And then they let the ball go out wide and try to do their you know, couple of trick plays and things yeah. like that. So. I think the Blues are going to be alright this year mm. I'm going to pick the Blues to win it Wow They're going to win the Super Rugby Why? Because I, I just so fucking can't take another year of losing So yeah, yeah. they have to win Well I'm going to go with the Chiefs uh, no, no, Shut up gonna gonna Chiefs. But Only because um, right my girlfriend's <laughs> first cousin is Sam Kane And uh, you know it's just Just got to support him Oh I appreciate that Oh yeah. wow Do you think he's supporting you right now? Well, <laughs> who knows, maybe. Is Sam Kane here doing an interview with us? <laughs> no, he's not. Is he not. pouring me a cook and bourbon right now? No. <laughs> Is Sam Kane giving me a shoulder rub right now? No. no. I don't think he's that sort of guy. What? 
You don't think he rubs another man's shoulder? I'm sure he's sexually sort of confident <laughs> in his own position that he can rub another man. Like, I, I get a message. This is Dan McLeod. You can find him on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any <laughs> willing masseurs out there? Or I, I, go, I go to these Chinese massage places, not those dodgy wow. ones. Wow. Not those, wow. Hey, not those dodgy $50 for the first hour. Wow. Not those dodgy ones on, on um, $10 special. Vivian Street and Not Long those London. ones on Dominion Road where they've just got like really big numbers on the fences. <laughs> just a big open sign. No, I'm talking like the Wayne's massages and the ones that have the shopping centers. Oh, and, yeah. and I get the guys oh, in yeah. because the girls don't fucking get enough strength. Enough. Hey. Nah, that's right. Yeah. So I, and I don't have a problem with another. Man, man my with osteopath shows. is an ex Olympic uh, Olympic style um, bodybuilder. So you are definitely John Barry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like well, um, my osteopath. Uh, my, my osteopath. Yeah, he's really good. And uh, yeah, sometimes we have drinks with him. My gynecologist. <laughs> that's right, gynecologist. Yeah, Islanders are like. I'm just gonna have a shower. <laughs> yeah. The whole sore body, you know, I'm just have a shower. Hot funny, shower. Funny enough, Islanders, rugby, talking about them, segue into the next part. Hey. The big talking point. Will the All Blacks tour to Samoa next year? Or this year, sorry? Yep. The uh, talk is yes. Yep. Okay? However, will the Samoan rugby team boycott the game? Cost the Samoan rugby union all that money because of the politics that goes on in Samoan yeah, rugby. Yeah. yeah, you know, and that's what's and so the All Black management are actually on their way to Apia tomorrow to go check out the the grounds and go check out the facilities and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit of a recon mission, but I mean, what happens if the Samoan rugby team pull out? You know, is this a, is this a massive loss for the Samoan people? We know we know why they're doing it. Yeah, are the Samoan people going to be behind it? Because this is a huge thing. They've yeah, been yeah, screaming yeah. for fucking years to get the All Blacks to go play there. Yeah. The All Blacks are now going, but the Samoan Rugby Union with all their policies and political yeah, infighting yeah. and yeah, things yeah. like yeah. that and the way that the money, the money train seems to be just rolling uphill. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is it the right thing to do? It's hard to answer it. You know, being of some Samoan descent, like of course you want to see uh, the All Blacks play in Samoa. Um, and, and I think a lot of Samoans that have played for the All Blacks kind of hope to one well, day... Don't they owe it to Samoa yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to yeah, play you know, over like there? Okay, all right, all right. Forget that argument for oh, a start, yeah, yeah. okay? All right, because I tell you what, I'm... S- oh, let's get to oh. you very quickly. Finish it off because I'm going to touch on this in a second. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, I, hope, I really do hope to see the game in Samoa, but at the same time, the politics really does hurt the sport and, and I think it needs a, a change because rugby league yeah. gets the same treatment from the prime minister as well yeah and, and this thing the prime minister should be worrying about running the country rather than you the know doing union. The, being being involved in the rugby union because yeah. that's where he starts thinking you know he's gonna still have his like prime minister shoes on when he's talking as the rugby union guy so yeah He's going to get his roles mixed up, and it's yeah. just really sad. It's going to hurt the sport. Yeah. And he says some outrageously dumb shit, too. Yeah. Which, which I, yeah, I think fucks a lot of people off as well. Hard up. Anytime there's a chance to get a major sporting franchise, whether it's in rugby or baseball or anything, to go to a small market to like take advantage and, and build up that small market, when there's potential yeah, yeah. there, especially like some always produce great rugby players. If you can get more money into that market, more exposure... The problem that they got problem. here is because the money isn't trickling down to the clubs, it's not yeah, trickling down no, to the yeah, community. Yeah, to the grassroots. It's going straight back up the, up the money train. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, what and do they do? I, from there, who knows where it goes. I think the game should happen no matter what. I think, I, think, I think the people deserve the game as well. More than... This is more than just about money. This is about um, yeah, it, the experience. It's about taking the All Blacks there. You know, and I mean, this is World Cup year. This is huge. And the fact that the All Blacks are even willing to go play an extra because what it, what it was, this was an extra game that was put into the roster. Yeah. yeah. So the New Zealand Rugby Union accepted an extra game to go to Samoa. So this is this is this is a massive deal. But I also think it's going to be a massive deal in the sense of like how many people people are going to actually watch this game as well. Sure. You know, because you have a sh- you have more Samoans in South Auckland than you have in. Yeah. yeah, Auckland is yeah, the yeah. biggest and Polynesian city in the entire world. Yeah, and I mean, and then there are a lot of Samoans and Islanders that are in Australia as well, um, and that that are into rugby. So it's going to make sense financially as well, uh, in terms of uh, people watching. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. We, you just hope they can make it work. Like, yeah, 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 hope yeah. it happens just for the sake of it happening. And, and I hope that Samoa gets to put through their best fifteen. Same with All Blacks. You don't want All Blacks sitting like their B team. <laughs> no, yeah. that's right. Because that yeah, just sucks. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't want it. You like. You don't want an Auckland Nine going. To be honest, going. Uh, and, and the exciting part is going to be watching the Sam ones play with some real heavy tackles. Yeah. And and, and I I got a feeling that the Sam ones that play for the All Blacks would be targeted as well. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I mean, it's, it's it's a good, it's a healthy sort of rivalry. Yeah. Uh, it's it's nothing like 
we hate you, we're gonna stab you. <laughs> That's and, and later. The cool thing would be to see like the two huckers um, at yeah. the same time. True, eh? at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that creates face a real crazy buzz. Yeah. Like Samoa did that versus Fiji in the last uh, rugby yep, world. That's right. They yep. did both of their um, that's really, war dances really at the same time. Yeah. So that, that'll be pretty cool. Pretty cool to see. I hope the game happens mm. for the people. I'll tell you what I, this is what I want to touch on what JB was talking about before. This, 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 this concept that New Zealand rugby owes it to Samoan rugby because of all the Samoan players that have played for the All Blacks. Let's make, I mean, this is how I feel. The majority of these players were born in New Zealand. They're of Samoan descent. Yeah. You're yep. not telling me that we owe it to England of all the white descent players, the European descent <laughs> players, the Caucasian players that played for the All Blacks over the years? But what about the players that weren't born in New Zealand? However, who made the decision to play for the All Blacks? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Right. I, and I, can, I, can, I think if you have a look at the number of players that were born, uh, born um, in Samoa over the last 20 years, I remember looking at the stat. It's about four or five of them, or five or six of them, were born in Samoa. Wow. Now, but, but in saying that, though, like guys like Mills Moliaina, he was, I mean, he was, he was born there, um, but he made a choice at a young age that he wanted to be an All Black. Now, he, came, he was coming through the ranks of rugby at the very early level of professionalism. Yeah. So back yeah. then it didn't matter if you played for the All Blacks or you played for Samoa. Yeah. The money was only at super rugby level. Okay, You were getting contracts for rugby unions and things like that, but it wasn't huge money like it is today. Mm. These players make a choice to represent the All Blacks. So I heard that dream is shared by everyone in New Zealand. It's kind of, you're kind of born into that dream. That's right. That yeah. Where everyone wants to be an All Black. Although say that there's a lot of players. Say that to guys like um, um, uh, um, Alapati Leilua. Guys yeah. like that who were who were asked if they wanted to be an All Black, he's like, no, I want to play for Manu Samoa yeah, and yeah. things like that. So it's not in, in just it's not just a natural viral in, uh, embedment into your, into your psyche. They they make a choice because a it's probably because they want to play and win a World Cup and play for a top team. Mm-hmm. B they know if they're playing for the All Blacks, they are one of the top players in the world. Yeah. But also because in essence, we are a society now where it doesn't matter where you come from. If you're, if you're a New Zealander, you're a New Zealander. It doesn't matter if you're an Islander, if you're a Māori. doesn't matter if you're Asian or you're Caucasian or you're from Tahiti or if you're from France, Europe, Germany. It doesn't matter where your, where your, where your lineage comes to now. Because I think what's important is that if this, if this is who you want to be and where you want to play for, it's because that's about where you, where, where you base your, your footing, your standing yeah. feet. Mm. You know? and, and so I think, I think players who play for the All Blacks who choose to play. I mean, Michael Jones is a really good example. Michael Jones is, has been the biggest advocate for, for um, we're talking about a, a great, great rugby player, one of the greatest rugby players to ever play the game. Yeah. And you're talking about a guy who's been very, very open and, and upfront about the All Black, the New Zealand Rugby Union um, um, paying its dues to Samoa and rugby and all this sort of stuff and, and, and insisting that players play for, or choose Samoa ahead. Yeah. However, now that he's not the Samoa national coach, I don't quite hear Michael Jones talking about that so much, you know? <laughs> Not in his interest as And much. you're talking about a guy who in 1987 decided to play, or 1986 chose to play for the All Blacks. Now at the time, Manu Samoan Rugby wasn't really prevalent, but yep. he got the option in 1990 to play for, for Manu Samoa, and he, and he chose to play for the All Blacks. But what's the money like? Like you know, the money was there was no money. Yeah, yeah. there there's, was no there's money. There's no money to play for Manu Samoa. But there was yeah, no money. There was, there was, I wasn't even wasn't professional. Yeah. Yeah. There was no money back then. Yeah. No, it's not quite entirely true. The, they've got two or three top tier players who get some really good contracts. But yeah, but that was like that's now, wasn't it? But you know, back, but not, like in yeah, the first rugby World Cup, Samoa had to share. They didn't have enough boots, so when a player would come off, they had to literally swap boots. Like yeah. you have to wear my boots. But to does, does that field. become the All Blacks resp- or New Zealand rugby's responsibility? But do you think it's in New Zealand rugby's interest to to do this. No, I believe it's in world rugby's interest yeah. to invest more money into areas that can grow. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. and that's and that's, so that's the model for that's more right. successful. Don't put all the pressure know, on yeah. New Zealand rugby just because yeah, yeah, New Zealand true. rugby is the big heavyweight in this part of the world. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's not their responsibility. Yeah, it's the it's the international rugby board's responsibility to fix this, and it's international rugby board's responsibility to grow. It. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to get an, you're going to get a situation like FIFA where you've yeah, got corruption, right. yeah. where you've got um, all sorts of backroom. Deals. Exactly, and, and there's no intent to grow the game yeah. in the smaller nations. It's not holistic. Uh, that's yeah. exactly right. It you makes know? the game better when when you have 
more competitive countries. Yep. When it's not like cricket kind of has the problem now where there's like five or six top tier nations. That's right. And then, and then everyone there's a else. Huge yeah. drop off to the next. It's tier. like huge. Oh, it's yeah. huge. You'll like, see it in the World it's like Cup. Like tier one, like. and then it goes straight to tier four. That's yeah, the sort of the discrepancy oh, that you're talking oh. about. You, you don't want that in rugby. If you can build up those smaller nations, it's great. Yeah. It's a win-win for everyone. Because you know, then you sell more tickets on tours, and, and then there's more money in it. More TV. But, you, mm. but yep. you know what? You want to know why there's no there's no money in Samoan rugby though? For Samoan rugby players, but right. they pay test rugby for money Samoan. It's because the Samoan rugby union is sh- shifting all that money upwards. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funneling it yeah. back up. So they're doing a FIFA. Yeah. That's right. right. So a lot of the, yeah. So a lot of the players have to take big pay cuts. Had to some of the guys from Europe had to pay for their own flights. Wow. Um, even when they were in Samoa, um, one of my friends uh, was playing for the uh, the team, and he was saying that like. The villagers, you know, like people that barely have any money, are still coming up with envelopes, giving them money, and, and that, donating, and, and don't yeah, wow, there was a lot of donations. The other thing to yeah, remember yeah. too is those some of those money Samoan rugby players um, choose to play. So what happens is, if they're playing in, in Super Rugby franchises, they're effectively being paid by the New Zealand Rugby Union anyway. Right. So they're employed by New Zealand Rugby Union. New Zealand Rugby Union has a stakeholder in every single one of the teams. Okay. Yeah. So that's what's happening there. The players of money Samoan who play in Europe are also getting paid professionally to play over there. Okay, it's not like the All Blacks are getting paid two hundred thousand dollars to be an All Black. Okay, they're getting paid X amount of money to be a top tier Super Rugby player. Yeah. So, so how much does the All Blacks get paid? Oh, it's not even. It's not huge much. So I think I think a top tier All Black will probably get paid a couple hundred grand a year. And then oh. and what and what would that be compared to say? Uh, if you want to compare it to like an Alapati Lelua who chose to play for money Samoan, he was probably earning a hundred grand. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, okay, maybe 70 to 100 grand. So yeah. it's still comparable, you know, yeah. based on market share. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. You know? So you've got, so, I mean, that's what you've got there. But the real money for the top tier players, it's like the NBA. Yeah. You've got players in the NBA that are earning Max $3 million a year as opposed to $20 million. Yeah. And then you've got players like Kobe Bryant or, or, or say, um, Kyrie. LeBron James. Oh, yeah. But where does their money get boosted from? It gets boosted in in uh, merchandise agreements. Broadcasting oh, rights. Okay, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing with the All Blacks. Yep. The All Blacks were an X amount of money. But you know Richie McCall's got all these other deals that are given to him yeah, because, yeah. Of his, because of who he is. Deal, because of his personality. Well. Yeah. That's right. Richie, Richie McCall's the guy you want to buy a beer when you see him at the bar. Yeah. Richie McCall's the type of guy you want to give your wife to. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you see Richie McCall and you're like, <laughs> Richie, my wife. She loves you. Do it. Hey, hey, hey. Meet I'm the good. missus. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, man. Take me yeah. in if you need me. Take me if you need me. Richie Inspiration. Ma- is Richie Ma- McCall not the greatest man in New Zealand? I like, think, yeah. Doesn't he like, he, he like... No scandals. No scandals. I think that's the best thing. There's just no scandals about him. Fucking nice guy. Gets stomped in the nuts. Doesn't even wear a cup. Great attitude. <laughs> <laughs> never gets into fights. No. Uh, off like, the field, never gets into fights. They're like, yeah, beating, yeah, up, yeah, they're like yeah. beating up on him and shit. And he yeah. just fucking takes it. You man, know, that guy, he is a rugged good He is a good Kiwi Okay. Yeah. Do you think is, he could make it in it combat sports? I think he could make he it. He is ragged enough. Well, yeah. He could be a crossover athlete. If he if he had like if he had like BJJ abilities or some sort of stand up oh, game, he could be. A, he Imagine could him taking man. you down. He would. What rugby player do you think could cross over to MMA? We were kind of talking oh. about Sunny Bill early. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were talking about yeah. Sunny Bill. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That, yeah, no, that's, I don't that's really hard because like. I've seen some of these uh, sports players, like rugby players, come into the gym, hitting the bag. Some of the yeah, yeah. Uh, rugby for uh, training. Yeah. Um, and technique is definitely not there. Yeah, that's right. But the fitness and you can. But like, you can what, see if you, you can really what if they got the CM Punk? You know, they got a contract and they got a year to to become that guy. But you, then you need a big name to actually do that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You don't want to see someone that people don't really know. What about yeah. someone like Inglis or something? Yeah, maybe, maybe Inglis. Now Inglis only beats up his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Who are some of the rugged NRL dudes you think could do it? I don't know, but Greg Inglis looks like he could be linked to going to rugby uh, union as well. Ben Mason. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's huge. And that's a big news because Greg yeah. Inglis is probably the best player in rugby league today. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. If he goes yeah. to sure. rugby union, where will he go? Uh, some, um, I, I, I didn't see. I think it's somewhere in Europe, though. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Go where the money is. Go where the money is. Pretty yeah. much. Pretty much. Follow the millions. Yeah, and then come back and have your retirement seasons in, in the NRL. And still be good. And still yeah. be paid And still be the top, top, you know, two oh. percent of the league. Yeah. So I think the talk is that there's a number of European clubs talking to him at the moment for a move next year. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a standing offer from a number of French clubs starting at 800,000 euro a year, which wow. is 1.17 million. It's good money. Wow. It's not bad. And, and you're never going to earn that money in the NRL. Right? No, no, but he's one of the top tier NRL players. He's what is he getting paid? The top tier. He top tier. Yeah, no, what is he getting paid though? Uh, um, at the moment, he's probably getting paid maybe three or 400,000 a year, I'd say. Wow. Fuck, that's a big, so it's that's like, a nice little pay yeah, 400% in for one year. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I'm, sure. I mean, I'm putting these numbers out of my ass, but that's what I imagine that's, based yeah, on what I've seen. The average. Players, yeah, like what, what they get paid. Yeah. So, hey, um, America's Cup is something I want to just quickly touch oh, yeah, on because God. there's a lot of talk here in America's Cup about whether or not whether or not the government um, puts more money into Honestly, it. Honestly, I feel like the the America's Cup is just really watched by rich people. I, I disagree. It's a rich I, I, I think you know. Rich New Zealand has, in has quite a rich history, recent history I, I think, for I the think America's Cup. I think that's why your your everyday person really doesn't give too much care about the America's World Cup. Uh, I did, yeah, I'm with Dan. I have to sort of disagree because I know that you know the last America's Cup, people were going nuts, and you know people that you never thought were into it were were going for it in terms yeah. of the America's but Cup. I mean, I, I was down in the viaduct when yeah. we when we won, no, like no, Red Sox. Lost. Oh right. Yeah, I was down there when we lost, and I. I I almost feel like we did lose a lot of supporters at that time. Of course, of course. You know, Kiwis love a winner. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. as soon as you stop being that guy or that team or that entity, then, yeah. then you know, it, it becomes a lot tougher. The problem so, with uh, the America's Cup has always been the business stuff always gets so in the way of the actual sport. Yeah. Like, the last World Cup was just years of lawsuits and yeah. court cases. Yeah. And then it was like, and then it happened. And it was well, like... So you know, it's, and essentially, it's one of those sports, the more money you have... It's a, it, it's a pissing yeah, contest. For, for me, it, it's a pissing contest because, yeah, yeah. you know, you've got, um, what's his name, Oracle, head of Oracle, um, you know, one of the richest men in the world, like multi-billionaire, he owns the American syndicate and, you know, the, if they make it technology dependent, that basically just means money dependent yeah. and, yeah. you know, New Zealand is short a couple of billionaires to so compete. So let's, let's forget the fact that's, that's, that this, there's a sporting element to yachting, okay? Yeah. <laughs> And let's think about <laughs> what thirty-six million dollars did That's right. did for yeah. the New Zealand economy. So the idea, so a lot of people go, well, why are you spending thirty-six million dollars on a sport that's already a rich man's sport? Yeah. Okay. Instead, you could be spending out thirty-six million dollars on up-and-coming swimmers or cyclists or giving that money to schools or and social infrastructure. Social infrastructure. <laughs> that's correct. Well, it's already earmarked for sport, I guess. So. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And, that's what people, and that's what people don't understand. Is yeah. that, that money is already earmarked. That's right. It's not coming sport. out of kids' mouths that's and right. into rich people's So every bikes. year, the government will have to give a budget and they have to put some money to sport. Yeah. And the idea is that they want to get a return on it. They don't want to just, they just don't want gold yeah, medals. Yeah. They want to get money and, and, yeah. and they're brought into the... Um, into the into the economy, you know they, they want to see the economy grow. So for thirty six million dollars, JB, your thoughts on whether or not we should do it again? Well, you know the, the America's Cup does have a history of paying back investments to the country as, as far as I'm aware. Well, no, even no. just competing, dude. Like at the last one, we we had a huge presence in America. So you know, so so. so so the way you, so you actually you're very typical you're actually excellent for this you're a typical sports fan and your view on America's Cup winning about money should be spent because you look at it on the face value of well yeah, if we yeah, don't yeah. win it we don't have the viaduct pumping we don't have people coming into the country and spending their money yeah. Yeah. that's only one really really tiny small part of, of what what gets brought back into the economy? Yeah. Take for instance the amount of money that got spent on the in the in the marine industry here in New Zealand alone. I think was somewhere around four hundred. We million are world dollars. leaders in in technology when it comes to sailing. In fact, to the sailing te- the technology the technology yeah. that was used for Oracle to win was designed from by New boat Zealand. builders in Auckland. Yeah, a friend of mine's brother. Why, so why didn't we win? Because we we didn't use them. We didn't yeah. pay the money to use them. The, it's because it's, it's a business it comes back to money. But Leah, my friend, um, her brother held the America's Cup because he is a designer for Oracle. Like yeah. they won it. He there's photos of him on Facebook holding the America's Cup. Yeah, yeah. And he's a Kiwi, you know. They're from Hamilton, so. And and, and I think you need to get. We need to get beyond this. Is uh, it's a New Zealand national thing? It's not. This is a franchise thing. It's That's like right. having it's the, called the, team. It's New like Zealand. having the Warriors or the Breakers or yeah. yeah or something like that. If, same if we had a team in the in the Tour de France. You know, it's the same sort of thing. So. The amount of money that it brings into the uh, into um, into the economy, I think, is worth it. I yep. think the fact that the, the amount of publicity that we get, because well, one of the discussions are, and um, they're going to have, they want to have the Challenger Series based here in New Zealand, here That'd in Auckland, be huge. which would be huge money. And so the yep. government said, basically, we'll give you the money if you if we get the the rights to host the Challenger yep. Series. If we don't get the Challenger so Series, the Challenger Series is like on. similar to the Louis Vuitton. the Louis it's the Louis Vuitton Series. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's, yeah. it's the second biggest deal of the America's Cup itself. So that and that's where you pick out the final to uh, whoever's going to Whoever's going to challenge the for, challenge for the, America's yeah. Yeah. the America's Cup. Comes down uh, to yeah, one yeah, one team that challenges so last So there's, there's lots of different yeah. financial sort of aspects to it. So anyway, I don't know. 
I, I, I'd like to see them spend the money. I'd like to see us continue. I, th- I enjoy the history that we've got in it yep. now, especially over the last 30 years. Yep. But yep. most importantly, I'd like to win it because I fucking hate losing. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> hate yeah. losing. Yeah, I, I was there during when we lost and when we got our ass whooped. Yeah, man, just um, the last the I last was working on the volume yeah, yeah, yeah. too. And, and it was just we so lost seven in a row. And we had that song, Call Me Loyal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually hate that song. It was played every 10 minutes. Yeah, that's right. For non stop. <laughs> I fucking want to punch Dave Dobbin in the throat for that. Hey, shout but, out uh, to Dave Dobbin. Shout out to yeah. Dave Dobbin, though. Hey, start a riot. Kiwi Battler. Street. Kiwi Battler, Queen. Start a riot. Street. Street. That's what's up. Um, yeah, but, you know, it's. I hope, yeah, hopefully we won. So I reckon, Sonny, Sonny Bill, if you can hear me. Pick I'm, up, uh, one out. I'm calling you out. I'm one calling out. you out to play for the America's Cup. What about Sunny Bill versus Inglis in a boxing match? Ah, uh, Sunny Bill will take Sunny him. Bill. No yeah. worries, yeah. no worries. Hey, Sporting Lockdown, we're going to be back in a little bit with Sport and Brawl. It's your Sunday afternoon. UFC Fight Night, Broomfield. Yeah, yeah. Henderson versus Thatch coming up. We've got the undercard on the screens at the moment. Skelly versus Ellers. Ellers, did I say it right? Uh, Ellers? I think it's Ellers, yeah, sorry. Two Americans. All up, bro. Going to get into it. It's featherweight action. If you want to watch it, come on down. 74 Wyndham Street, the tap room. $5 Heineken, $5 Woodstock, $10 lunch specials. $10 chicken palm. It $5 is hookers. All good $5 hookers. <laughs> actually, that's just Nathan. Uh, that's the shisha, actually. It's a bit more than $5 that's for a shisha. It's just Nathan pretending to be a I'll urinal. Be We're going to be back in a little bit. Here's some New Zealand music for you. It's Eddie's right here on the Sporting Lockdown. Oh, yeah. coming up.